Hallo, herzlich willkommen. Ich heiße Ashton und I am representing the Christlich Demokratische Union Deutschlands. My main party is concerned with issues such as the freedom and making sure that we are a German that is a uh, Germany that is strong and powerful and strong in the economic and global markets that we live in today. We continue to push for measures in the EU and to continue to make a better uh, Europe and a better world as we know it today. Hello, ich heiße Angelo. I represent the FDP in today's debate. The FDP stands for Free Market and Globalized Economics and believe that a globalized economy is the key to economic advancement in the future. We also believe that alternative energy is a social and economic necessity to make investments in. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kenneth Park and I'm here representing the Christlich Soziale Union in Bayern and otherwise known as the CSU and we are here to represent the ideals of conservative measures in terms of social issues such as immigration policies and we also believe in an interventionist approach to economic stability. Hello, my name is Simon Moore. I am representing the Soziale Demokratische Partei Deutschland or the SPD. We support the working man and we encourage equality for all and uh, European unity. Hello, ich heiße Jack Xia, and I represent Die Linke. Our primary goal is to overcome capitalism with democratic socialism. We support primary policies to increase taxes on corporate businesses while also lowering taxes for the struggling workers. With this, we also support increased government interference in economic and domestic affairs, as we cannot trust the free market and the people themselves to do it on their own. This does not automatically mean bureaucracy, it just means that we are the ones responsible for the change that takes place in this country. Hello, I'm Nina Brown and I'm representing the Green Party. And so as our name suggests, we are all for the environment and helping the environment. One of our two main concerns concerning the environment is first, investing in alternative energies and also abolishing nuclear energy in Germany. Um, but we're not just about the environment, we're also about social issues. Uh, the Green Party is very socially progressive, we always protect and we want to maintain equality for everybody in all ranks of society. How should Germany address the refugee crisis which is plaguing them and the entire EU? Well, first of all, we have to make sure we deal with this crisis in the most humane way possible. And setting a limit on the amount of people that we're trying to save is an inhumane thing to do because these people are coming from an area where there's a crisis, these people, their families are dying, their lives are at risk. So putting a limit on the amount of people we allow into our country is not only unfair, it's unjust and immoral towards the lives of those people. That is why we should not set an upper limit. And in fact, the people that already come, we should provide them past the decisionship and also allow them to integrate even more people to come into our country because that is who we are. We're a country with fairness and a country where we try to get as many people to safety as possible without being inhumane. So they're suffering as they're coming to Europe. Many of them go on boats and many of them go on land. And regardless of how they come here, it's very dangerous and many of them die. And so as the EU, as Germany, we need to make sure that these humans are not being you know, put into danger. We need to make sure that we're you know, putting all the precautions in place, that they can become citizens of, the, you know, of Germany, and that they can actually integrate into our society. Uh, I think that's especially important for northern EU countries to participate in helping the refugees because a lot of the southern EU countries right now are suffering a lot because they have to take so many refugees in. So I think that Germany should continue what it's doing now and continue to take in as many refugees as possible, not only to help those refugees, but also to take the strain off of the southern EU countries that have to take the whole refugee crisis on their own shoulders right now. I agree completely that we must address this situation humanely. We must do everything in our power to help these people get away from the danger they're in. However, there are legal immigration means People should not be immigrating illegally. If, they're, if they've immigrated illegally, we should aid them in a voluntary deportation um, and then help them back in legally. We should not set a cap, but instead we should, we should prioritize by a point system similar to what Canada has. It is at this point ineventable that refugees will continue coming into our country no matter what we do. And all we can do is help to address this in the most humane and efficient way possible. 
I am completely in favor of letting refugees to continue to come into our country, but as we do so and as we do everything we can to help them, I think we must keep in mind that we need to be working with the entire European Union on, Union on this issue, and that the end goal of taking refugees in should be to send them back to their countries once they are stabilized, not to integrate them into our countries and make them citizens. As many of, our, of my colleagues have already mentioned, we really need to be at the forefront of this. This isn't just a German issue, but this is an issue plaguing the entirety of the EU. As we continue to look outwards, we need to make sure that we are the leaders of the EU, as we currently are. We need to set the national standard, and by doing that, we need to continue taking in these refugees and continue to provide them with the help and aid that they deem necessary. As these people continue to come, we need to realize that they are coming from crisis-afflicted uh, places, and we need to provide a nice, safe, uh, place for them to be able to come here and restore and gain some sort of stability in their life. Now I agree with my fellow colleagues that the refugee crisis is one that Germany can help and that we are helping currently, but I believe that even Germany has its extent. We don't have the capabilities to just keep on letting more refugees into our country without any cap. That's why, although my sister party, the CDU, has stated that they don't want to have a cap on the number of refugees, I must argue and put my foot down on this matter because Germany cannot handle the, the entirety of the refugees just coming into Germany. Rather, what we should be doing is working with the EU, not just having everybody come to Germany. Now, I know many of us have talked about this. Now, where do we stand on the global issue? of Germany's stance in the EU. Shouldn't we stand at the forefront and be taking in the most amount of refugees and continue doing our current policies? I believe that we should, and that we should continue to lead the EU in taking refugees in. However, I do not agree that Germany should bear the burden of making all of these refugees citizens and integrating them. Rather, we should house them and feed them and do what we can to help now, and then as soon as possible and their own governments are stabilized, return them back to their own countries which they originally came from, for the most part, so they can live in a stabilized society. But isn't citizenship a prerequisite to having certain rights? Aren't these refugees who are in Germany right now, you know, being discriminated against because they don't have citizenship and because they don't have those certain rights that come with citizenship? And the point of this, the point of taking in refugees isn't to be the forefront, isn't to be a leader. The point of this is to be a humane country and demonstrate what true German values are. And that is being humane. That's not for the point of leading the EU and becoming a powerful country. The point of this is to help people who are in need. Oh. So how is it humane if we cut off the next 200,000 people that want to come to our country because their lives are at risk? How is it humane to just cut them off after we've let in just the first half? Of course, all this talk about humanity is a great thing for Germany. It's great for Germany to have, but we need to think pragmatically. We cannot just have an indefinite amount of refugees coming in, granting them citizenship, and basically letting them overrun our economy. What we have to do is we have to put our foot down. Now, we know it's hard, and I know it might be hard to turn away these refugees, but it's the pragmatic thing to do. It's what we need to do. But is there evidence that they're overrunning our economy, or are they simply contributing to our economy after they come in? It is um, a known fact that if we just let things run on indefinitely, there's going to be a, ch a, a, a plan, a, a point where we don't have the capabilities to support them anymore. I need to, um, sorry, I wish to elaborate on my colleague from the FDP's point. We need to lead the EU, but they need to follow with us. If we go, if we accept refugees, we have to work with them. At the same time, we can't just expect them to follow our example. We have to take this to the whole EU and work on it together. How else does this happen if we aren't the ones to stand at the front of the EU and say, look at our refugee policies, look how we can bring this? We can stand at the front, but we have to bring the EU with us. We have to attack this together at the same time, both at home and with the EU in collaboration with other countries. Being a leader doesn't mean that we have to do everything. What, what it means is that we do a certain amount to show the other people what they need to do and then have them follow us as well. But then that, that hurts our image because now we're just being inhumane to the other people. Yes, I'm sure we're helping 200,000 people or whatever your cap is, but the next person in line, we're basically killing them because we're not allowing them into safety. We're basically forcing them to survive on their own. No, no, the, the cap isn't necessarily going to kill them off. Rather, we, what we can do is have them go to a different place in the EU just rather than just Germany, right? It's not necessarily just having them gone. But isn't being a role model, doesn't that need necessitate us to take in as many refugees as we can? Because the fact is right now they're being refused, and when they're being refused, they're being killed, they're being put into dangerous situations. And in my personal opinion, if we are to be leaders, if we are to be the forefront of this initiative, we need to make sure that we're doing all we can to help these refugees and help these humans. I have a question for the FDP. So you're in favor of essentially deporting these people back to their original countries. 
What happens if they've already established a life in Germany that they are content with having? How are we going to be humane about sending them back to a country where they've basically only lived only a few years of their life? Again, we are not deporting all of these refugees. We will keep on to the ones who have established a firmer base here, but most of the refugees, they will be sent back to their own countries once their own countries are stabilized. This is a temporary measure. You can hardly expect Germany and the EU to consume millions of refugees and integrate them into our society without damaging our economy. It's inefficient and would be inhumane to our own citizens. We help them by sending them back to their own countries and to their own homes and their own families once those places are stabilized. What action should Germany take to combat climate change and ozone depletion? Well, in the past few years, we've seen that we've had a number of very influential international agreements. I mean, just look at the past one in Paris, where we basically agreed to combat this global warming altogether as an international force. I believe that as long as we stick to these goals, and as long as we invest in alternative energy and, and things such as that, that will help combat global warming through innovation, we will be just okay. We need to continue to move to this globalist stance that we have. We already made a landmark agreement in the UN on the Paris, uh, glo on the Paris, uh, issue on on the Paris Accords on climate change. What we have to realize is we have to maintain these issues and make sure that Germany takes it, its front stance. We already have many EU nations backing us in our stance to help reduce the world and help pre uh, prevent a two degree Celsius increase in global temperatures. We need to continue to push towards that target. We are already on set for our goals and we need to continue the current energy policies that we have as they are working and we are the forefront leader in this. And we need to make sure that other nations follow in our fo footsteps. I agree with my partners in the CDU that we must remain the forefront of the United Nations effort with the Paris Climate Accord to combat global warming. I also think that we should invest strongly in alternative energies, which will not only help us combat climate change and global warming and reduce that problem, but will also boost Germany's economy and the economy of the United Nations as a whole. To elaborate further on my colleague's point about um, increasing investment in alternative energy, we should invest fully in uh, civilian solar panels. So not only should uh, large agencies create solar fields, but also normal, ordinary citizens should be involved in putting solar panels on their houses and finding other new alternative energy sources so that everyone feels involved and everyone is responsible, so that we all work together toward combating climate change. For the great for the Green Party, uh, environment is not just a matter of the environment, but it's also a matter of justice. How can we say it's fair if we enjoy all these privileges from having these resources and our future children do not? And so we think it's extremely important that we not only combat uh, global warming, but combat other environmental hazards that are happening right now in our generation. Um, like my colleagues here, I agree and I think that we should continue investing in alternative energies and continue working together as an EU whole to combat global warming. But I'd also like to add that we need to move away from nuclear energy. This is something that's extremely dangerous. We first took this stance, out of, this stance as a party at the Chernobyl disaster, and we continue to take this stance at the Fukushima disaster, and what we see now and the um, lack of maintenance that's happening with our nuclear reactors down in Germany. And so not only should we continue investing in alternative energies, one thing that my party stands very strongly for is that we do not, we do not use nuclear energy for it's dangerous and it puts Germany in jeopardy. I agree with all of my colleagues that Germany must remain at the forefront of the EU in terms of combating climate change, and that all these previous agreements are extraordinarily important in keeping our stance and making sure that we combat climate change as effectively as we possibly can. Now, on what the FDP said about trying to invest as much as we can in alternative energy sources. We need to make sure we're placing these investments accurately. We have to know where this research and where this money is actually going to go. And I don't think we can trust the private sector to do everything for us. We as a country have to make sure that we as a government ourselves must take control of this research and have initiative from the government itself in order to combat climate change. That's the only way we can ensure that these changes are actually going to make. We cannot trust the market. We cannot trust the private sector and invest purely in the private sector to make those advances on their own because they don't just care about climate, they also care about money and they also care about their own livings. So that's why we, instead of just simply investing in the private sector, we have to sponsor programs ourselves in order to combat climate change and the ozone disasters. 
Though my party is against sponsorships and government um, add-ons and incentives for businesses, nobody is proposing that we solely rely on the private sector to do this for us. Again, we are a strong supporter of staying at the forefront of the EU with the Paris Climate Accords and working with other countries to help reduce these in other names. But we believe that we should also help grow our alternative energy and, um, economy and the economy of the United Nations by investing into these in addition, which will also help additionally combat climate change. What we have to realize is innovation comes in the method that it comes in. Whether that be through the private sector or whether that be through central planning, we have to realize that the ultimate goal is a global initiative to help make sure that global, um, that global temperatures do not rise above 2 degrees Celsius. We all know the research. We've all seen how disastrous this would be, not only just for the EU, but for the entire world as a whole. So as we continue to look at these issues and as we continue to debate out these issues, my colleagues, I want us to really hinder in on that issue and focus solely on the fact that we we have to make sure to have um, counter the harmful and negative effects of climate change. So as we sit here and argue what's the best way, why should we be arguing this when instead, why can't we just put our money where our mouths are and continue to just continue push this effort of alternative energy as a whole? Well, we believe that while alternative energy as a whole is good, there are some negative things. For example, good places to put our money would be in development for batteries to make electric cars so that we don't, so that our commuters don't waste, don't create lots of carbon emissions as they drive to work. Bad places would be nuclear energy, which creates waste that lasts millions of years. We don't, we haven't been around that long. We don't know how harmful it will be on the long term. We don't even have permanent storage spaces. We don't, we don't know how to deal with this because it's just on such a massive scale of time. Yep. So we need to stay away from nuclear energy. Nuclear energy, however, gives us the most potential. Nuclear energy is basically the most, um, it's the most powerful form of alternative energy we currently have. Isn't it better to start investing and researching that so that we can make it cleaner, so that we can make it more reliable in the first place? No, that's not the right answer. Nuclear energy is extremely dangerous. As we saw with Fukushima, and as we see now with our failure in Germany to <coughs> upkeep and maintain our nuclear reactors, we, it has to be understood that this is something that's extremely dangerous and we can't just play with it. Um, there's other forms of alternative energy that we can invest in that will be much more... Uh, that will be much more rewarding for Germany in the end. And in fact, if we go nuclear, it's going to you know, put the country in jeopardy. It's going to be extremely dangerous. And so even though many of my colleagues are tempted by the idea of going nuclear for some kind of economic benefit, because it, you know, people argue that it provides the most energy you know, for the most, you know, most efficiently, um, they don't understand that nuclear energy puts our citizens in jeopardy. And that's not something that we should do as the German government. But what we have to realize is as we look towards nuclear energy, it is a method to make sure that Germany can be energy independent and make sure we can get away from foreign influence, all while pushing for a more alternative and green standard. Well, regardless of what type of energy we choose, we just have to make sure that this isn't just coming from the private sector because we can't trust them to do everything for us, like we said. And if you're concerned about economic development, well, even if the government's sponsoring the programs and we're having the programs ourselves, we're still giving people jobs to do. So either way, the economy is going to be benefited from whatever we invest in in terms of alternative energy. We just have to make sure that this has to come from government initiatives. But the government should keep its hands out of the economy and out of its bureaucracy and the economy out of bureaucracy whenever is possible. And this is one place where the private sector would do a better job. And on the idea of nuclear energy, I agree with the CDU that while nuclear energy is not possibly the best means in the long run, Currently, it is a good, stable method of producing alternative energy, which means we don't have to rely on other countries for oil, and we're also not polluting the environment with coal and carbon emission. How, how can you say it's stable when there's so many dangers associated with nuclear energy, and we don't even know where to store the nuclear waste? The, the whole concept of it being stable is against the whole concept of nuclear energy, where we harness its instability, and we don't know what could happen with that. We, we may not be polluting the environment with as much carbon, but we're polluting it with radioactive waste that'll glow in its storage containers for the next million years. Although, like, we seem to have very different views on this matter, the important thing is that we come together with the ARSA, with in inter-party and with the entirety of the EU to combat climate change and make sure that temperatures do not rebuild, re sorry, temperatures do not rise above two degrees Celsius, as that would be drastic, or, uh, uh as that would be um, terrible for the entirety of this world, not just for Europe and for Germany. That is the most important piece here, and the way we go about it does not matter as much.
What measures can Germany take to decrease unemployment? In order to combat unemployment in our country, what Germany should focus on is opening up the free market more than we have, taking the government's hand out of the economy and limiting bureaucracy in the economy so that it plays a minimal role. The private sector and becoming more globalized and free market economy will benefit in taking down unemployment and increasing our economic viewpoint. While I agree with my colleague on, in the FDP on some points, we should not withdraw our hand from the market, from the economy. Instead, we should decrease only military funding. We do not need to increase our military. We do not want to start another war. Therefore, why would we need a larger army? We should pour the money instead into infrastructure. This would create new jobs in Germans, uh, in German industries, it will be Germans doing the jobs, building our infrastructure, and that infrastructure in turn will help support more communication and connection, which will lead to greater economic prosperity. Uh, I agree with a lot of what has been said. I do think that we need to kind of keep a global eye out when it, in terms of the economy. I also think that uh, it's not good for us to, the government, to not have a hand in our economy. Um, but I'd like to say, as a Green Party, one great way we can help the economy is by investing in alternative energies. Um, some countries around the world now are kind of like backing down from alternative energies and trying to go back to coal and things like that. And that's not going to work. Anybody who has you know, any knowledge in this field knows that we need to continue our investment in, in alternative energies. And by doing so, we can actually stimulate the economy and create new jobs. And so that's what I propose. Well, one of the primary causes for economic downfall and unemployment are the inconsistencies of the free market and the inconsistencies between corporations interacting with each other. That is why, as the left party, I support the government actually funding the public even more and actually providing public investments. That strengthens the economy more than just relying on the free market itself. In fact, I support the central, bank, central banks and the government to collaborate with monetary policy in order to remedy these business cycles and therefore revive the economy while also providing more employment. The CSU and the CDU both believe that we can actually achieve complete employment by 2025. And with Angela Merkel as head now, we can actually make this policy go through. What we propose is the addition of a whole bunch of mini jobs, as our opponents call them. Basically what these mini jobs are going to be are going to be slight, smaller jobs that can actually help provide the people of Germany with employment, with jobs. And by doing this, we're going to be giving them an actually sustainable way to sustain their own family. And through this, we can actually achieve the unemployment goal of, of less than 3% by 2025. Now, as my partner from the CSU, in fact, as my, as my sister party, the CSU already mentioned, my party and as well as theirs are looking to get full employment by 2025. We see this as a very uh, foreseeable goal. What we have to realize is that the German economy is in a really rough spot. Uh, spot. We can look all the way back to April of just this year where our unemployment was at 3.9%. Compared to the wet rest of the Western world, we were doing great. However, as we look at it here in July, as of July, we were at a staggering 5.5% unemployment. This massive jump isn't helpful for the economy. In fact, this is why our two parties decided to come together in a coalition manner in order to get full employment. We want to be under that 3% limit, something that hasn't been achieved by a modern nation in a very long time. The economic prosperity that would boom from this would be great and influential not only for just us as the German uh, nation, but for individual German citizens, especially those who happen to lose their jobs in the recent months. So as we continue to look at this problem of unemployment, we have to realize it isn't a matter of oh, let's create jobs this way or let's get jobs this way. Instead, we should invoke every method possible. This is why our plan of having the mini jobs, these small jobs that may not seem like much, we need to have them in order to get something going just so we can get these people back to the workforce and back working, back making, uh, making a wage. Just wondering, are these mini jobs provided by the government? Now, most of these mini jobs come from businesses, also through governments. It's, especially, it's essentially just like the smaller parts of a job. If you were to think about it in a more practical sense, it's the smaller parts of the job that people do that they aren't signed up to do. We just hire new people to, in order to do those jobs. Wait, do you agree that to reduce economic disparity in Germany, we need to focus on education and kind of reform what we have now? Yes, our education, our, the education problem is a huge one in Germany. And especially as we look towards this unemployment disparity, we have to realize that we need more people to pursue higher education 
education. That's where the most of the jobs are. We can look towards major German uh, economic markets, mostly being the car market that we have already captured the corner of the world market share of. We need to continue to improve and innovate in that sector as opposed to just looking for more lower and low skilled jobs. While I agree with you about your, the fact that the businesses should be the ones to help rejuvenate the economy, I've got a question with your mini job plan. How do you plan on getting businesses to, con to on convincing businesses to hire many people that are unnecessary when you can have one person do multiple jobs without government incentivizing these businesses to do so? No, no, no. You misunderstand our plan completely. Now, there's going to be the mini job section in part of it, but what we're proposing isn't just mini jobs. What we're proposing is that Germany as a whole try to get the unemployment stance down so that we can actually have full employment by 2025. This is through any means necessary. We can use all of the plans that all of the other parties have proposed all together, but the goal of, the, um, of our party is to get the government itself to say that we need to get the unemployment down because that's what really matters at this point. No. There's, this little, there's a little problem with your mini-job plan. It sounds very similar to something that we tried to instate a while ago, um, in which we made part-time jobs and lower-paying jobs much, more, much easier to introduce and to start. The, when we did that as part of a large package of reforms, everybody rebelled against it. It did not work out well. It caused a recession. This would would this not lead to the same sort of thing where yes. people may be employed but they're not employed enough to earn a living wage also people would still be employed even if you reach three percent there's still three percent should we not be focusing more on our uh, on our unemployment benefits to help people and hide and tide them over until they find their job now if we're looking towards the issue of having three percent unemployment that's actually something that many economists would say is actually a very good thing as that allows for social mobility and allow people to leave their jobs and be able to find new ones relatively easily and making sure that we have an, uh, a pristine group of individuals that we can draw from in the need of a mass uh, job creation event but furthermore as we look towards this you addressed this recession that we had in the past, but when we look towards the fact that our unemployment rate has grown 2% in a very short amount of time, we have to realize that at this point, it's time for the government to take any means necessary to prevent this from getting into a true recession. So yes, we may have gone to a recession before due to similar policies, but we can't alone say that this was the policy, and this is a policy that we can deem to be beneficial. If I may add, um, you claim that we're going to be giving unemployment benefits instead, but what exactly, and you claim that these benefits are going to be there in place so that we can actually help people move into new jobs, but without enough jobs to have um, people, like, with enough, without enough jobs to, versus the proportion of people, how exactly are we going to be helping them move to these new jobs? Well, um, I would like to add in that while I do agree with creating more jobs and actually giving people a job in the first place, we also have to make sure that the quality of those jobs are adequate. We can't just simply give someone a job, even if, because if they're paid $1 an hour, that's technically a job, but that's not livable. So we have to make sure that these wages and the jobs they have are humane jobs and jobs that they can actually live off of. And the only way we can do that is by not relying purely on the free market and actually interfering that and having tax policies and government policies to make sure that the wages are high enough and that the corporates actually have a significant tax on them to hold them accountable for the jobs that they provide. This not only provides the government more resources to stimulate the economy, but also holds everyone in the economy responsible for what they do and ensure that everyone actually has a job that they can actually you know, live off of.